All right, so now we've kind of gone through how to add a bunch of rows and columns, change the styles on them, change the content in there, change the formatting. Uh, so you can see it might be a little bit time consuming to go through and do this, but it does let you uh, pretty much get it to look exactly the way that you want it to, as well as have the exact content that you want to have it in the exact locations that you want it. So pretty powerful there. Um, but what other options we have in here, uh, we'll run through those really quick. So we do have the ability to have these tickets sorted. Um, it will suggest that you use drop off name right here, but you could sort by any sort of property that makes sense in here. So we'll go ahead and sort by drop off name. It should be somewhere around here, association, drop off name. And then it also has a secondary sort, so it can sort by one property, and then within that property, it'll sort by a second property. So this is useful if you wanna have all of your tickets sorted by where they got delivered, but then by the timestamp within that. So you can choose a secondary property in there. So we'll go ahead and also do the timestamp, uh, driver departed, uh, we'll do departed drop off, which is the uh, recommended ones, just cause it kinda keeps everything pretty clean. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the footer. I don't really want it. One thing to note though, if you do want to turn these off, and later come back in and you may want to bring it back in. It does save your extra header information and extra footer information. So you don't lose them if you do change that. But uh, kind of going down now, we're down to this last section where we have the ability to add a few more Excel specific things. A lot of these don't necessarily work if you've used the CSV file format, like frozen cells and merged cells and things like that don't work. But uh, in here, we do have the ability to... Uh, well, let's go ahead and put an extra header back in there and I'm gonna add a cell right there. But what we could do here is have it display an auto filter. If we do that, we have to specify the start column and the start row and the end column and the end row. So I'm gonna have the start, we'll have it start on A2 or A3, because this is gonna be the first row, second row. We'll have it start on A3 and we can have it go to Z1000, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you can embed an image if you want to do that. You can freeze cells. So frozen cells would be a um, way to have it so the top is always visible no matter how many tickets there are in there. So we'll have it start there. So the number of frozen columns will do zero and the frozen rows will do the first three rows are frozen again since we got those two at the top. If you want to merge cells, you can go ahead and click on that and you can add multiple of these. So let's say we want to merge these cells C1 and C2 up here. I can come into here, add merge cells, so my start row. Uh, one thing to notice in this, zero indexed is means that you start counting at zero. So my start row is going to be, instead of one, it's actually gonna be zero. And my end row is going to be one. And then my start column in this case is gonna be two and two, I believe. So this means I go from kind of coordinate zero, two. So if we come up here, zero, one, two, and we go to column one, um, or row one, column two. So row one, column two, but it starts, you start counting at zero. That's just kind of how the merge works within Excel for whatever reason. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, if you want to just do any cell overriding of content, you could do it from here. Usually you would do the cell content overrides up here in the cells, like we showed in the previous part in the video. But if you wanted to do it down here, you have full access to get this editor and put in a row, a column, and do this whole thing from here. And you can do this, you know, multiple different times. So you can actually give your cell coordinates and do the overrides directly without um, going up into the other section. Probably won't ever do that, but you could do that. And then the last down here is to override column width. So by default, they'll be about the same size as the content, the widest content in there. Uh, except for CSVs don't have that obviously. But if you wanted to put in specific column widths, you can give a min width, a max width, or specific width for column A, column B, column C. So you can come through here and specify column widths if you want it to you know, have that specified. But with that, I'm gonna go ahead and save. And we are going to download a copy of this and take a look at uh, some of the stuff we put in there. So we'll do that in the last section.